Hey guys, how's it going today? Okay, so welcome back to La Casita Jardin. My name is Heather and we are out here. I'm flanked currently on either side by our new green stalks. I have not had a chance to plant them out. I have had bushes to put into the ground. I have had pavers that I've had to put down and I have not gotten to these guys and I really, really want to get them planted out and I figured, hey, why don't I turn on the camera and you can join me and we can do it together. So without further ado, I am going to do a combination of seed planting and plant planting because, let me grab you, hold on, excuse me, because, okay, now we are in the greenhouse. It's a thing of beauty. It's not finished, but it's, it's getting there. It's getting there, guys. We're almost there. Okay, so let me, okay, you are turned around. So what you are seeing here are a bunch of different seed starts now i'm gonna go on ahead since we didn't initially plan on having the green stalks um that was just a surprise decision on our part okay sorry about that minor interruption i had a dog eating a plant for the second time so i had to go be mama dog there for a second Okay, so anyway, the green stalks were a surprise. Now, it's not a bad surprise because as you can see, we have a lot of plants here that need homes because I don't have room out there, <laughs> especially for several of these tomatoes. I've got these tomatoes down here. I think that one's a surprise tomato. I have a whole tray of nothing but surprise tomatoes because our miniature greenhouse that we had ended up collapsing and there were plants in there at the time long story short there are mystery tomatoes um so obviously there are things now some of these are flowers that up there that is a hyssop and that'll be going in the herb um bed so um don't count those and then these guys here are African Daisy. I don't know what they're going to look like. It's going to be a surprise flower. Um, this is a honeywort, which the foliage on it is just gorgeous. And it shoots up real tall. And it has this really pretty uh, pale purple belt flower. Absolutely gorgeous. That also will not be going in there. And then... These are some dahlias that got shipped to us. I was trying to do some CPR and see if I could save them. I, I don't think it's going to happen, guys. I, I'm trying everything I know how, but I just I don't think it's going to make it. Either, any of them are going to make it. Um, these here are ground cherries, and I really, really want to plant these, but I don't have a home for them. So they are going to be going in the greenhouse as well. Uh, those are more of the mix African daisies, so I have no idea what color they're going to be, but it's going to be a beautiful surprise when they go on ahead and bloom. But I've got space for one tomatillo in the bed. Look, this guy's already trying to flower, flower on me. Um, but I think I'm going to stick this tomatillo. Well, actually, that's a basil, I think. Yeah, that's a basil. So I think I'm gonna stick a couple of these tomatoes in and try them and just plant out that green stalk and see how it's gonna go. Okay, so we are back out front and I've got my seed box out here with me. So here's just some of the seeds that I'm going to go on ahead and start in here. I do need to run back inside and grab my markers. I have a horrible habit of not putting markers where I plant things. It's become a joke. So anyway, 
Um, so here's a few of my <laughs> seeds that I'm going to be starting, besides putting in some of the um, tomatoes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have a dark cucumber. I have ragged jack kale, and I'm going to put these in here with the hopes that Macy will not be able to get them. I'm going to put them in the top, very top, so that Miss can't get to them. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. I can tell you that right off. Tatsoi? Tatsoi? It's kind of, a, it's a leafy green. Um, this is typically cold tolerant, so I'm not sure how it's going to do right now. I do have some squash. I'm more of a winter squash person, which is why I'm going on ahead and starting it later to hopefully avoid the worst of the squash bugs. I'm hoping that by now all the squash bugs have basically come out and they have landed on everybody else's garden but mine. Yes, I am going to be that gardener. So I have an acorn squash because acorn, it, my favorite squashes are butternut and acorn in that order. Um, my mother's favorite squash is going to be this guy here. Now this is a spaghetti squash um, from Sa Sustainable <coughs> Seed Company. We've had really great <coughs> germination results with this company. Um, so I would recommend them. It's a vermicelli F1 spaghetti squash. Um, and it, it originated in Japan. So it's supposed to be a little bit more pest resistant. Uh, oh, I'm going to try putting in some of these eggplants. I've got some also planted out there with, you guys would have seen that on a previous video when I did the seed starting a month or more ago, I think month or more. Wow. Time is flying. I'm also just doing good old-fashioned bush green beans and then the cowpea old timer um, because this is a dry bean and my dogs are mostly vegetarian so having some dried beans after last year's weird bean shortage will come in handy. All right so with that let me get off of here and we will get this guy planted up. Well these guys planted up because there's two of them so plural right right okay so I'm back out here I've got my markers got my pen I remembered the pen Woo, go me all right so let me go on ahead and get this guy going hope you enjoy Okay, so that is these guys completely planted out. And as you can see, super duper proud of myself. I got the tags in and I just went layer by layer. I kept everything the same. Um, the only difference is on this one here where I have the tomatoes. I did go on ahead and the ones that had tags, I put their individual tags in so I knew the varieties. You don't have to do the same variety for each level but that's what I did just because that's what I needed to do. So, all right. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this video off, get us inside and go get our dinner before all of that decides to hit, which works for me. 
also, side note, before I do sign off, you saw me topping off with a bag of soil. If you recall or if you haven't seen my previous video on the green stock, you do need to fertilize. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, there's no worms, there's no in-ground, natural, good microbes that feed the soil. So you have to feed the soil. So since it's been two weeks since we planted or stacked and put all the dirt in these guys, I went on ahead and just did a good inch because I had left myself room. I figured it was going to be a week before I could get back to it. Turned out to be two weeks. It happens. But that being said, I had left an inch because I had anticipated the delay and just went on ahead and topped off with some new fresh soil that had nutrients in it. I will also be putting in the top reservoir, which is this guy here, once a week, I'll be putting in a liquid fertilizer um, and that will just filter all the way down and feed the entire thing. You could also do worm castings if you want to do worm castings instead. That is an option. And Greenstock, I think on their website, you can actually order worm castings on their website. So, you know, you can go on ahead and do it all at once. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off here. Guys, as always, keep it simple, natural, and essential, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.